Hello friends, welcome to this ninth video on the series of group theory. This video will talk about rings and fields. So if one algebraic system is not going to be supported by one binary operation, we define one more binary operation to support this algebraic system. In which case, when more than one binary operations supported, we will define a concept of ring and we extend it to the concept of field. So we will see in this video what are these concepts of rings and fields. Come on, we will move into the video. With uh, one binary operation, we have seen uh, structures like semi-group. A semi-group is one that is going to satisfy a closure law and an associative law. And with one uh, binary operation, we have also seen about the algebraic structure called as monoid, which satisfies closure, associativity and existence of identity. One more uh, algebraic structure with one binary operation is called as group. Group is one with one binary operation that is satisfying closure law, associative law, existence of identity and existence of inverse. So this semi-group, monoid group, all these are all examples of algebraic structures with one binary operation. We have only one binary operation defined on the non-empty set. But what happens is in general, the um, system is not going to be sufficient with uh, one binary operation. So we are going to introduce two basic operations. One may be like addition and the other one may be multiplication in which case the algebraic structure will be referred by the name ring. By imposing more restrictions on the ring, other algebraic structures with two binary operations can also be obtained for. So we will now see the formal definition of what is meant by a ring. Now uh, there is going to be an algebraic system with R, a plus and a dot. Okay, R is going to be a non-empty set plus is going to be one binary operation, dot is going to be one more binary operation. This may not be the same as our ordinary addition or multiplication, there can be any binary operation. In which case you call the structure, this algebraic structure, non-empty set, first binary operation, second binary operation, to be a ring if it is going to satisfy the following conditions. Condition number one, with respect to the first binary operation, it has to form an abelian group. Next, condition number two, with respect to the second binary operation, it has to form a semi-group. Third condition, the operation dot is going to be distributive over plus. That is for any a, b, c, I need to verify that a dot b plus c is a dot b plus a dot c or b plus c dot a will be b dot a plus c dot a. So if my condition 1, 2 and 3 is going to be true, then this algebraic structure of R plus dot will be referred as a ring. Now this as such is going to seem like three conditions alone. But if you are going to expand each and every one of them, now how will they expand as R with respect to plus is abelian. What do we know about abelian? Abelian group is one which has your associative law true, your identity element exists, your inverse element exists and since it is abelian you have commutative law to be true. Now this is going to be with respect to the operation plus. Now coming to the operation of dot with respect to this this is going to be a semi group. What do you mean by semi-group? You have your associative law to be true. So now this one on expansion will have four properties. This two on expansion will be one property and this three will be on expansion these two property. Putting all them together we notice that with respect to plus it is going to be associative. So a plus b plus c must be the same as a plus b plus c for all the elements a, b and c that belong to the set of real numbers. There exists an identity element. So the first one is going to be your associative law. 
the second one is going to be identity element which we denoted by 0 so that a plus 0 is the same as 0 plus a which is a next third there is going to be for every element a an element b which is equal to minus a in such a way that a plus b is equal to b plus a equal to 0 so this element b will be called as your existence of inverse for each element and a plus b is the same as b plus a says that it is going to be commutative with respect to plus so with respect to plus now this forms an abelian group and now with respect to dot what happens it is going to be semi semi group means associative law is going to be true now this one two three four five along with this uh, three four five and along with your sixth quantity which is going to be your distributive law distributive law which has a part one as a uh, plus uh, sorry a dot b plus c a dot b plus c is going to be a dot b plus c is the same as a dot b plus a dot c or you can write it as b plus c dot a which is b dot a plus c dot a so totally 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 conditions have to be now shown to be true to show that any algebraic structure is going to be a ring so to show that it is a ring we need to prove for 6 conditions so you need to keep this in mind now some examples of ring are the set of integers with respect to usual addition and multiplication the set of real numbers the set of rationals the set of complex numbers all of them are going to form a ring with respect to our basic addition or ordinary addition and ordinary multiplication as the two binary operations now moving on now what we know is this basic structure of ring has been defined with respect to the plus it is going to be almost full all the properties are going to be true but when it comes to dot it is going to have only one property true and there are going to be many properties which are going to be missing like identity is missing inverse is going to be missing commutativity is missing so what we can do is to this ring r we can do some topping like uh, add-ons and then we can alter the nature of the ring according to the requirement so that is what we are going to do in the next thing so when this r with respect to dot is going to be commutative that is we have only associative to be true with respect to r and dot so now along with associative you are going to add commutativity as a topping to it okay so you are going to top this r with commutative law then what you call this r plus dot you call that to be an commutative ring so associative law is true with respect to your dot which means your a dot b dot c is the same as a dot b dot c and commutative law is also true that is a dot b is the same as b dot a so you add this condition extra to this r with respect to the second binary operation then the ring will be referred by the name commutative ring now if this r with respect to dot is going to be a monoid so what do you call this then then the ring with respect to plus and dot is called as a ring with identity what do we mean by monoid monoid is one which has associative law to be true and identity element exist so with respect to r and a dot already associativity is going to be there so what we do as to r is we add a topping the topping is called as identity element or the identity property so if this identity property is added as a topping to this r with respect to the second binary operation dot then you call this ring to be a ring with identity or you call it as a ring with unity this name unity because the identity element identity element with respect to the multiplication operation will be denoted by one right so with respect to addition it is denoted as zero which we defined in the previous slide and with respect to the multiplication we define it as one so that a into one sorry a 
the binary operation binary operation 1 is the same as one binary operation a will give me back my a okay so a dot 1 and equal to the 1 dot a equal to a so if we do the topping of commutative law to be true you call it as commutative ring if you add the topping of identity element to it then you call it as a ring with identity or a ring with unity we can move on to the next definition which is called as definition for zero divisor what do we mean by zero divisor is if a and b are going to be two non-zero elements notice a and b are non-zero a is not equal to zero and b is not equal to zero and they are two elements of the ring but they have a property such that when they do the binary combination of a dot b or a uh, binary operation b the answer will come to be equal to zero in which case the elements a and b are called as zero divisors of r or divisors of zero of r so the elements as such aren't zero but under the binary operation of the second binary operation a dot b what is the answer landing to it becomes equal to zero so for example let us consider the uh, real numbers uh, which is going to be the set of integers if uh, in the real number system we are going to consider the set of integers modulo 6 so it is integers modulo 6 is it with respect to 6 so what are going to be the possible reminders when divided by 6 so 0 can be a reminder 1 can be a reminder 2 can be a reminder 3 can be a reminder 4 can be a reminder and 5 can be a reminder you will not have 6 as a reminder when divided by 6 because 6 divides 6 exactly and leaves you with 0 now we can see that the element 2 which is going to be over here belonging to z6 this 2 is going to be not equal to 0 so something like a not equal to 0 also there is going to be a 3 which is going to be not equal to 0 so you have a a not equal to 0 or you have a b not equal to 0 but when you do the binary operation of 2 multiplication modulo 6 with 3 what is 2 3s are it is going to be 6 when you divide 6 by 6 what is the reminder it leaves it leaves a reminder of 0 so 2 multiplication modulo times 6 of 3 will be equal to your 0 so what actually you have here the elements aren't as such 0 but when you do the binary operation the answer is going to be 0 so what do you call 2 and 3 as they are referred as the 0 divisors or the divisors of 0 because neither of them are 0 but the binary operation gives you 0 so this is the definition for 0 divisor now moving on we call a commutative ring with unity that contains at least two elements and without zero devices as an integral domain so there is going to be a ring with respect to r and plus it is going to be abelian with respect to r and dot it is going to be commutative so already associative law is going to be true uh, with unity unity meaning identity element is going to be true and it is also having commutative law to be true commutative law to be true if with respect to this plus it is abelian with respect to dot it is associative identitive and commutative and it the distributive law is going to be true then if these properties are satisfied then such a ring with the two binary operations are referred by the name integral domain notice what is missing over here inverse is missing over here but apart from that inverse all the things which is going to be this r with respect to dot abelian is present okay so you have to keep in mind in integral domain the inverse element doesn't exist over here so the ring of integers is going to be an example of integral domain but when you have integer modulo 6 that does not make an integral domain because we know that two non-zero elements give the answer as zero and uh, the usual thing which is going to be our uh, uh, set of um, um, real numbers the set of uh, um, 
um, complex number and all those things what happens they can also be considered to be an integral domain now moving on to the last concept which we are going to define over here is going to be field what is meant by a field a commutative ring r with multiplication identity containing at least two elements is called a field if every non-zero element of R has a multiplicative inverse. So notice what are the highlights over here. It is commutative, it is having identity, it is going to have multiplicative inverse. So now you have a complete package. R with respect to plus is going to be abelian as such. R with respect to dot which was associative gets added up with commutativity and you get it added up with identity and you get it added up with inverse so this there is a complete package making it to be abelian with respect to the second binary operation also and now you also have your distributive loss to be true so you have this complete set to be true for r with respect to plus and a dot and now this algebraic structure will be referred by the name called as field so it's just that you do a topping one after the other as per the requirement arises and now you have a complete package where it is going to be true with respect to two binary operations and so that complete package will now be referred by the name called as field Okay, the ring of rational numbers Q with respect to plus and dot is a field since it is going to be commutative, it has an identity element, it is going to have multiplicative inverse for every non-zero element of Q in Q itself. Similarly, the set of real numbers, the set of complex numbers are also going to form the field with respect to your ordinary addition and ordinary multiplication as the two binary operations. So I now suppose that algebraic structure with two binary operations is going to be clear and we are now ready to do problems in them okay happy learning keep learning thank you very much